Hello, I'm Greg with Primal Rights. This video has been requested quite a lot lately by the viewership, and for obvious reasons, the new Garmin Chronograph uh, launched recently, and uh, a lot of guys are looking for my feedback on just what kind of a unit that thing is. So no lengthy intro or cool music or anything here. We're going to dive right into the meat and potatoes of this and do some velocity testing. Now I'm going to throw just a pile of different rifles at these things and we're going to be testing head to head the new Garmin Chronograph against the Magneto Speed V3 and the Lab Radar. Starting with something fairly easy for all these chronographs to handle seems like a pretty obvious thing to do. So we're starting off with a 7 PRC Primal with a 22 inch barrel shooting a 166 A tip. Obviously, looking at those test results, it's pretty basic to understand that a larger caliber projectile going relatively slow is going to be very easy for all of the units to clock. So let's step up the difficulty a little bit here, and let's get into a 6 PRC Primal with a 26-inch barrel shooting 110 grain A-tips. The idea here is to try to move up with increasing difficulty on stuff that these units would have a difficult time reading. So we're going to go to a 22 Creedmoor now. This is a shorter barrel, 22 Creedmoor, 20 inch barrel. And so they're, and then too, I've um, just got some break in rounds loaded for this thing. So they're pretty slow. Uh, even for a 20 inch barrel, they're going to be pretty slow. So we'll see how it does here with that. Now staying with the 22 caliber, I wanted to move up to something that's uh, more average in terms of velocity for the 22 Creedmoor. And I have a 22 PRC Primal that I have downloaded right now for uh, colony varmint shooting. I'm doing some testing on barrel longevity with a larger capacity case, but run at significantly lower pressures. And so let's take a look at the 26 inch 22 PRC Primal running a 75 grain ELDM. Now getting into the smaller caliber stuff is where the radar style chronographs have typically had a very difficult time in the past. So we're going to step down to 20 caliber now and I'm going to grab the slowest 20 caliber that I'm currently fielding which is a 20-223 Ackley. And for this testing we will use 55 grain burgers. Honestly, I'm very surprised with how well the lab radar did here. Generally speaking, when I'm shooting 20 calibers, I cannot count on the lab radar to give me feedback reliably. Now let's stay with the 20 calibers, but let's move things up in speed quite a lot. 
So we're going to move over to the 20 Primal now. And this is a 22 inch carbon fiber barrel on this unit at the moment. And we're going to start with the 55 grain burger. I think it's time to thin the herd a little bit here, so we're going to switch to a different bullet. We're going to go to the 32 grain VMAX from Hornady. Now faster still, let's use the same 32 grain bullet, but let's step on the gas a little bit, see if we can get this thing moving a little harder and uh, try to challenge these units just a little bit more. So continuing to up the difficulty still, we're going to switch to the 24 grain NTX. So this is a Hornady bullet and it's one of their uh, non-lead projectiles. And it's actually a very nice little bullet if I have a choice between the 24 grain and the 32 grain. Oftentimes I'll pick the 24 just because it has a boat tail and is much easier to work with. Whereas the 32 grain is a flat base and uh, seating bullets is a massive pain. <laughs> Now the 20 caliber is historically pretty difficult for these Doppler type radar units to be able to detect anyway. And the extreme velocity and the little tiny bullets, obviously, they make it very challenging. So if you're really trying to test a chronograph, this is something that you definitely want to do. And I know that a lot of you don't have a cartridge or a rifle that can push that kind of velocity. So we're going to make sure we test to see exactly what kind of velocity this thing will read. So this is the 20 Primal with the 24 grain NTX from Hornady. Now it's not surprising to me at all that the lab radar basically completely fell out of the pack here during this testing. Historically speaking, it's just not been a very easy unit to get along with when it comes to smaller calibers like this. And frankly, I'm surprised it's done as well as it did in this test because historically I don't have very good luck with it. It's very finicky and doesn't seem to respond to any changes in settings or anything to allow it to be better at these small calibers, especially when they go very fast. I was very shocked, however, to see the Garmin unit keep up with this because, uh, frankly, I was not expecting that. The top end of 5,000 feet per second, I think um, I had no expectation whatsoever that it would be able to read a 20 caliber bullet at that speed. Now let's move along into some rimfire testing. Obviously, the uh, 22 long rifle has some specifics about those bullets. They don't have a copper jacket. And being that they're just lead, um, a lot of times the magneto speed will struggle to pick those things up. And, um, you know, you can get lucky sometimes and it'll, it'll, it'll work. But historically speaking, I just haven't had very good success with the magneto speed on a all lead projectile like that. Up first is a 26 inch 22 long rifle target rifle and RWS R50 ammunition.
Next we have a 20 inch 17 HMR and I forget whether I was shooting the 17 grain TNTs or if I was shooting uh, 20 grain game points. I forget exactly which I had in there. Um, but the, the goal here is just to get something that's kind of mid velocity of a tiny 17 caliber projectile and see if these units can track them. Next is the 20 inch 17 WSM shooting a 20 grain projectile. Well, folks, my feelings about this test are uh, probably pretty obvious to most of you watching this at this point. The Garmin is an absolute rock star. As far as someone that is in the market for a chronograph today, it is my feeling that if you have the dollars to do it, if you have the financial resources to spend $600 on a chronograph, then you obviously should buy the Garmin. Um, that's my feeling on this at this point. Now, the Garmin is a very new unit, so it remains to be seen just exactly how they will do over time. I mean, we don't know yet whether they're going to be durable and reliable, and whether they'll have uh, software or hardware problems uh, creeping up here in the future. Most people have some experience with Garmin products, and they, they tend to be of fairly good quality. Really, it's nice to get a lot more of experience with stuff. And uh, as time progresses, I'm sure I'll be having our various mentorship students show up here with various Garmin units as time goes on. I'll get a chance to have more experience with more different units and get a better idea of just how they are able to perform with multiple different cartridges and rifles across time. But sitting here today, it's pretty easy for me to recommend these units. I mean, they are just these little tiny things with an included little tripod and the size, weight, and capability of the thing, it's just an absolute amazing little piece of gear. Now, this thing was not finicky at all. During my use of it, during this particular test, it doesn't seem to care where the rifle is, where the muzzle is. Obviously, they want you to have it about 5 inches away or 5 to 15 inches to the side and 5 to 15 inches back from the muzzle. Um, but folks, I have shot so many different rifles and cartridges uh, across this Garmin unit at this point that it, I can tell you it just works. Um, finally, we have a chronograph that just works. There's no cables, there's no wires, there's no batteries. Um, you've got an internal battery that gets charged by the USB-C. Um, there's no big box and kit of stuff that you need to bring with you to support the thing. Um, if you wanted to, the same little battery pack that you would use to charge your phone or something can charge this thing up. Haven't had a need to try it yet, but I'm pretty sure that it will run if it's got a dead battery and you just plug it into an external battery pack and power source. It'll continue to run and you can just continue shooting and testing. Um, but as far as the software interface goes, I find it to be very easy to get along with and intuitive. And the firmware update process and linking it to your phone and taking care of all that is also very straightforward. Um, folks, bottom line, it is just probably the easiest to get along with chronograph that I have ever purchased. It just works. Uh, the magneto speed still shows a lot of strength here because obviously it's able to read shots. It didn't do so well in the 22 long rifle. That's very predictable. It really has a, a strong preference for bullets with a uh, jacket, you know, or a uh, uh, 
copper or bronze or something like that. Uh, it, it obviously works very well with solids too. But the fact that it's got um, this elaborate bayonet and all the cables and, and all of this, it kind of makes it less fun to set up depending on what size of a suppressor or what size of barrel that you're working with you you have to have different spacers and during this test I did have to jumble around with uh, a bunch of spacers um, to get the thing reading correctly but uh, despite that fact that thing up until this point has been my rock like when I really want to know what the velocity is I would grab that magneto speed one thing that I always didn't like about it was the fact that having it attached to your barrel regardless of what people might say does affect your group size and it does affect your accuracy so I have experienced both a precision and accuracy change by having it on my barrel so I could never do load development and test with it attached and and get any meaningful results on target with it. It would only ever be for getting my load work done and then put the magneto speed on there and then get the velocity. Now this test wasn't meant to say which chronograph is most accurate or something like that. Folks, I didn't shoot enough rounds here to give any conclusive evidence whatsoever about which one is going to be producing the best data because frankly we need much more exhaustive testing there in order to do that and now that we've established that the Garmin triggers reliably and will read out the projectiles in flight very reliably and, and, and give you a, um, a, a velocity number then that testing can be done in the future and I have done some of it already to just see whether or not the numbers that the Garmin is spitting out translates to real-world impacts um, because that's really important here. <laughs> it's fun to get new toys and to play with new devices and whatnot, but making sure that the number that this thing is giving you can be plugged into your ballistic software and then used to make first-round impacts on targets at distance, that is what makes the chronograph important. So if you can't trust the numbers that it's giving you, then it's worthless. So if you're still with me, um, quite obviously the Garmin chronograph is a buy, folks. <laughs> um, this thing is just uh, the current state of the art. If you're looking to grab velocity and do so at a relatively inexpensive price, the Garmin unit is the winner here. Our scripture reading in this video is going to come from Acts, the book of Acts of the Apostles, and we're in chapter 6 and uh, verse 1, actually. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. Now, it's important if you don't know the Bible that the Acts came after Jesus was crucified and resurrected, and the apostles were given the power of the Holy Spirit. And so they went around doing miracles and healing people and teaching about Jesus and teaching about the Word and teaching about God. And when when they were doing that, of course, they came under persecution, but they did have a lot of followers. And so they, they had quite a lot of people that were coming to worship with them all the time. And so here we are in that setting in Acts. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. Now, folks, isn't that just fitting? Here we have a group of men that are anointed by God, that have been given gifts of the Holy Spirit and have the power to heal and perform miracles and teach, and everybody wants to find something to fight about. <laughs> that just is quite fitting. Uh, I found that, that scripture uh, today to be quite powerful. For those of you that aren't aware of this, if you follow me on Instagram every morning, I put a scripture up. I put a verse up, um, a verse or verses. I put some scripture up on my stories on Instagram. And if you follow me and you go find my stories in the top of the Instagram app there, you can read some scripture each morning that I put up. This morning I put that particular scripture. And uh, I found it to be just very powerful because it's, it's so much like most things today where we have so much blessing. We have so many amazing people 
that are potentially in our lives and, and certainly can be found on this earth. But yet we will find something. Always there are those among us that will find something to complain about, something to create division over, and something to squabble about. And I really don't think that that is what we are supposed to be doing. Instead, we are supposed to be grateful and thankful for all that we do have and be joyful for everything that we don't have, folks, because if we don't have it, that means we either don't deserve it or God doesn't want us to have it. And so if you don't have something and you feel like you deserve it, then you'd better evaluate that and you'd ask yourself truthfully and go to the Spirit and ask for it again, but this time in the spirit of belief that you will have it. And you might find that you probably will. And conversely, if you're not given it, then you don't want it. <laughs> Nothing will bring trouble to your life like getting things that you are not ready for or shouldn't have. So be very cautious about this and show a lot of gratitude, folks. Um, not just for the people in your lives, but show gratitude to God for everything that you do have and be thankful for that rather than arguing and squabbling amongst yourselves about those things that you might not have.